course, I'll be by her bed, even in the US. They say, you can come in at 10, 11, I'll be here for 11. You can leave at 7, I'll leave at 7.30 to 8. I mean, and I said, so what are you doing here? I said, holiday. I said, this must be an, an interesting, I said, the best holiday so far. I was always by her side. But something now began to happen about a week ago, a week before she left. Um, about three weeks ago, I had a little surgery. Um, and when I was put to sleep, immediately I saw myself in a place. And I saw lights coming from every angle to a big light. And I couldn't see myself, but I knew that I was, I was light. I was conscious, but I, I couldn't see. And I felt like I was on a track. And lights were coming from everywhere and we're all going towards the light. And as I got into that presence, I started saying hallelujah. It was uncontrollable. I just started saying hallelujah. In fact, when I woke up, the nurses and the doctors said I was shouting hallelujah in the, in the surgery room. I was just saying hallelujah, I was speaking in tongues. And I moved towards the light. When I got to the light, the light said, it's not time. You have work to do, go back. And at that moment, it was like my track turned. And I came back. And as I came back, I kept saying hallelujah. And I was asking the nurse, was I shouting? She said, yes, you were speaking in tongues, you were shouting hallelujah. And I told everyone around. And I called my dad, I said, dad, this is the experience I had. It wasn't, it was, a, I felt comfortable in the place. It was peaceful. It felt like I knew the place, but I knew that it wasn't here. And I told my father, my dad said, that means when, if it's not your time, it's not your time. Yes, I said, yes, he said, amen. I said, amen. And then when they came back, Every time my dad would probably step out, at some he would say, Tolu, tell him to open the door. He has the key. Please, tell him to open the door. I said, Auntie Nomti, he has opened the door that no man can shut because I didn't want to believe what she was saying. She said, no, Tolu, tell him to open the door. You know he has the key. He has the key. And there was one morning, I was sleeping about 3 a.m., they had run upstairs to call me, that she's calling me downstairs. So I ran downstairs. I said, I'm said, Tolu, I need the code. Give me the code, the code. I said, Auntie Nom, I need the code. Give me the code. I said, Auntie Nom, I don't have the code. She said, Tolu, you have the code. I said, I don't have the code. She said, okay, go, go and find the code for me. I need the code. I need the code. And I left. And then two days before she passed, she would say goodnight. She would wave. I said, Auntie Two in the afternoon. Say good night. Good night. And I'll go back and tell my dad. I say, no, 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 no. She thinks it's, you know, she came from America. So she doesn't know the time difference. So that's why she's saying good night. And I'll just say, mm, Dad. But yeah. Why did I get that? God prepared us. There is a place. You are light. Whether you like it or not. If you're a Christian, you are light. She found herself and many lights going through the main light. And she was shouting, Hallelujah. He said, Daddy, that place was beautiful. I felt good. And but everybody was on one direction, going towards the main light. And when I got there, the light said, It's not your time. Go back. Nobody can take you before your time. No human being can. In the name of Jesus. Okay, how does that add to this? Why would she be saying, You have the code? Give it to me. But she would never say it when I was there. She would never talk of the key when I was there. This more gap that I would leave to go do something, she would start to talk to her. When I would come, she would keep quiet. I don't know, I can't explain. But from my own angle, I was standing on the scripture. Should be healed. I said on the scripture, honestly, when it will come to me, I said, Death, you can't take her until I agree. Wait. Because Jesus says that if two of you shall agree concerning touching anything here or not, it shall be done. The best agreement that can happen is between two believers, more so when they're married. So I'm just for not. 
So every time I was there, it was difficult for her because I was part of the emotion of husband and wife and she would keep quiet because I wouldn't agree. And the day she gave up was the day I was so tired. I had done my, you know, went to bed 5 a.m. on Saturday morning and then uh, woke up again. Couldn't sleep much. Woke up pretty early to run downstairs to go be with them just before 7. Then I couldn't sleep again until maybe around 2 or 3 prepared for Sunday service. Then two Sunday services last Sunday. Then I left them around the 12 so that I could sleep and not crash. 5 a.m. I was up. The boys who left for school and her daughters. I was to go down now. They went down and then they hugged her. She hugged, oh, she was very warm still, smiling, hugged them and they sang and everything. And then they left. But I was yet to go down. It was a good window. The front door was crassly shut. She left. I had the door shut, bam, the children just stepped out. The next thing steps, come down, come down, we need you. She had gone. Because if I would get down before then, I would create trouble again for her. Tried to bring her back, she did. But she invariably left. So that's the story. She did left very well. She did.